Gregor Mendel was known as the father of inheritance, but he wasn't a biologist. He was a physician, mathematician, and a monk at a church, but he loved flowers and plantation. He grew pea plants at his backyard, and he noticed how these plants have distinct differences. He was curious as how uh, this happened, so he grew hundreds of pea plants to come up with a law which we know as Mendel's Laws of Inheritance. Before we get into Mendel's Law, we need to understand the basic concept in inheritance. Genetic inheritance means the genes that we receive from our parent. We receive a haploid chromosome from maternal and another haploid chromosome from paternal producing diploid cell. On the homologous chromosome, allele at the same locus will encode for the same characteristic. For example, the allele in this locus code for eye color. The allele of capital A will code for black eye color, while the small a will code for brown eye color. In genetic inheritance, it is commonly used that the capital letter will represent the dominant allele, while the small letter will represent the recessive allele. And if a person who receives either both dominant alleles or recessive allele from the parent is known as homozygous, as the word homo means the same, while if the person receives different alleles, the person is known as heterozygous, as the word hetero means different. Their genotype, whether they are homozygous or heterozygous, will determine their phenotype, observable characteristic. Now, let's look at Mendel's law. There are two laws, laws of segregation and law of independent assortment. Wait a minute, do you remember this statement? Where could have you seen about this before, independent assortment? Can you relate what you have learned before with the topics of genetic inheritance? Law of segregation, look at one pair of allele on one homologous chromosome, as you can see here. So we have one homologous chromosome and one pair of allele. Because we look only at one pair of allele, this law of segregation also known as monohybrid, as mono means one. The second one, law of independent assortment by Mendels, look at two pairs of alleles on two different homologous chromosomes. As you can see here, here we have one homologous chromosome and this is the second homologous chromosome. And on each homologous chromosome, we have one pair of allele, allele A and allele B. So we look at two pairs of allele on two different homologous chromosome. Because we look at two different alleles, two pair of alleles, we call this uh, law as dihybrid. In Law of Segregation, Mendel stated that the pair of allele will segregate or separate during gamete formation, that is, during meiosis process, and only one of the allele will present in a single gamete. As you can see in the diagram, we have one cell with one pair of allele. When this cell undergo meiosis, the allele will separate into two different gametes, where each gamete will receive one allele. When we want to draw a genetic diagram, we will write in a simpler form, such as this, for the parent cell. Okay, capital A and uh, small a. So when the parent cell undergo meiosis producing a gamete cell, then we can write the gamete in this form, simpler form. In the second law, law of independent assortment, Mendel stated that each member of a pair of allele may combine randomly with another pair of allele. First, we have these two homologous chromosomes align at the metaphase plate during metaphase 1. 
we may have this arrangement of the allele or the chromosome may also align like this can you see the difference in the first cell we have how the maternal chromosome will align together like this and the fraternal chromosome will align together like this but in the law of independent assortment means that the, the allele or the chromosome will also align or combine randomly with another uh, allele as you can see in the second cell here where the maternal chromosome may also uh, combine with the paternal chromosome and, and this the second chromosome and this random combination will be able to produce four different combination of chromos of gamete so when we have lots and lots of combination for the gamete then we will be able to increase the chances of genetic variation and for the genetic diagram for dihybrid or the second law first we have the two homologous chromosome here means that we have two pair of allele so how do we write the genetic diagram to simplify the parent we write it as like this where we put the pair of allele together and then the second pair of allele and then we know that the second law will produce four different gametes with four different combinations so to make it easier we draw the gamete like this the first gamete the second gamete the third gamete and the fourth gamete as we just take each up from the pair of allele so we will have our genetic diagram like this if for dihybrid 